Hi, I'm The Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Knitting. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to episode 11 of The Mitten on Knitting. There are 113 days till Rhinebeck, so let's see what I've been up to. In Loose Threads this week, um, you know, I've been talking about my sweater and the competition pieces and everything, but I've left out the accessories that I'd like to wear. Um, I have the gradient spin fail for socks um, that I want to make into mittens and a cowl, and now I have the gradient spin fail too. Um, which turned out to be just about 400 yards, which is enough to make an an entire pair of socks. But unfortunately, because of the way that the yarn is, um, uh, the the, the colors came through, um, I'd end up with one gradient sock and, and one uh, plain cream sock, which would be rather boring. So, based on how um, my outfit, my planned outfit is going to be like around cranberries and such, um, are going to be, I need to come up with um, the completion for <laughs> for my outfit, which, you know, I'm thinking it has to be socks. But I'm really not sure how I'm going to do that out of this uh, last bit of fiber. I may not be able to do it out of the last bit of fiber. I may I may actually have to go out and get some more fiber. But I do definitely want to be able to um, have enough knitwear uh, to go out there and, you know, show that I actually know how to use fiber when I'm at the fiber festival. Although, um, last year I was at the festival and there was this one woman and she had, you know, the hat, the scarf, the gloves, the sweater. Um, then she had a shawl over everything and she had leggings and, and everything had ruffles and fringes and, and it was all in you know, tons of color and texture. And I saw her walking down where the buildings are, which is where the commercial space um, is and at the festival. And um, all the the people, you know, walking around uh, attending the festival were just, you know, complimenting her, this, that, and the other thing. Then I saw her a little later up at the barns and the look on the farmer's faces when they saw this woman who looked to them like she had yarn barfed up all over her. I mean, it was just like really much, much, much too much um, as far as texture and color and everything um, for the folks up in the barn spaces, which are, um, you know, these are the people who who raise the animals and, and... I guess their the tastes there were a little more sedate, but and then you know down in the commercial space where they're just um, selling, 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 um, they they would in, encourage a yarn barf kind of look, um, which really made me think about what I wanted to wear because normally I would I would just you know I would take my fanciest shawl or or whatever, and I would accessorize with that, but I think that something a little bit more thought out is is necessary, um, which is why I'm kind of struggling over this. So anyway, I, I don't want to look like a, a yarn peacock. I'd, I'd like to look like I just have a nice um, outfit that I've put together, and um, that's why I thought, you know, the cowl, the mittens, the socks. But um, without the socks, it kind of ruins the plan. So I really need to figure out what to do about this. Um, So 
that's what I've been obsessing over this week um, for loose threads. What's fit in the mitten? Um, this week, uh, it's been a little, a little hot, uh, so no sweater, but of course, still wearing the socks. I'm telling you, wool socks are the best thing ever in winter. They keep your feet warm, and when it gets warm out, they keep your feet dry and cool. So it's just a nice, exact, you know, sameness of temperature for your feet. And, of course, since you've made them for your feet, they fit exactly, precisely. There's no slipping and sliding inside of your shoes and... They're just the most comfortable things ever. I also did um, wear my green monster socks. Now, they are made out of acrylic, and they have fun fur, and they're um, a brilliant neon green, and the fun fur has brilliant neon green and brilliant teal. Um, They look like little monsters on my feet but they keep my toes so nice and comfortable and they're perfect for uh, going around the house and because they're acrylic I don't have a problem taking a brush to get the dog hair off the bottom of them Um, so they're not going to felt or anything as a matter of fact I wonder which would last longer a Twinkie or my green monster socks I have a feeling it might be the green monster socks although the Twinkie would come in at a close second um, so that, uh, Jared Flood's scarf is still in play for the pillow on, uh, the train. Although next week, I think it's next week I have off for vacation to finish all the gardening stuff, um, before the tour. So, um, that'll be the week that, uh, the Gainesy gets its annual, uh, bath and reblocking. Um, so... That should be interesting because it's it's incredibly long and it it was interesting to block it out in the first place. It's uh it's a bit longer than my blocking mats, um, but I I hung it partially up on the wall so the dogs don't get at it. Um, I try and I try not to encourage them uh, being participating in the drying process of my. Uh, newly made and being blocked items. Um, So that'll happen next week, and that's what's fit in the mitten. What have I been knitting? Um, I've been knitting the Rhinebeck sweater primarily. I finished the left front, and I have flipped it and am working on the back. And... I thought it was, well, first off, I forgot that it's a scoop neck instead of a V-neck cardigan. So I was a little startled on the left front when it started the neck shaping. And I was like, oh, no, I'm doing it all wrong. I'm going to have to rip. And then I realized, no, it was absolutely right. And I don't have to rip anything out um, because it's a scoop neck, not a V-neck. So once I calmed down from that, I got the left side all finished up and then I flipped it over on the back and I was going along and uh, I finally got to page three of the directions and the noise you hear or don't hear is my little Harley she wants some attention hello Um, so I flipped it over on the back and I started going along and then I read ahead in the directions and there were short rows they, they want uh, wrap and turn short rows. And the first thing I did was utterly panic. I was like, oh no, advanced knitting techniques, whatever am I going to do? And then I remembered, I knit socks. And you know why I knit socks? Because they use every single technique that you use in knitting is done on a sock. So wrap and turn is no more than doing a heel. And so I've done, as you well know, Many, many, many heels. And there is nothing at all that's problematic about doing wrap and turn on any knitting project because I've had lots of practice on socks, so I should be able to do it very nicely on my sweater. 
I may have to do it 15 or 16 times, but at least I know how to do it. Um, so I calmed down from that and, and got back to the, the knitting of the back of the sweater. And I'm at the point where I'm starting the arm shaping on the back. So armhole shaping on the back. So it should be uh, going along. And hopefully I'll get some knitting done today after I'm done taking Mr. Mitten around for uh, fundraising for the garden tour. Um, so that's my that'll be my reward at the end of the day for getting all my work done is more knitting. I also got some knitting done on the socks of many heels uh, while I was at the NPR show uh, Sunday. Um, I managed to get in over an inch going up the uh, leg there, which uh, made me pretty happy about that. I just went round and round and round. And uh, sitting there chit-chatting and knitting is always, always a good thing. Um, and they're coming out nicely. I may uh, decrease a little bit to, um, to accommodate my ankle. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how they fit. Uh, so far, they're they're just exactly perfectly fitting when I try them on. That's the other thing I like about doing it on the long circular needles is you can try on as you go and you don't have to worry about losing stitches. Um, so that's really nice. I don't know why I'm talking so long in the segments today, so I'm going to apologize for that up front. Um, but uh, I guess it's because I'm so excited about knitting. Not so much about spinning, though, but you'll find that out in a moment. Okay. What's finished this week? Um, really nothing. I did not, um, I did not spa the pink lemonade or the gradient fail to, um, yet because the citric acid, uh, did not arrive at the post office as it was, uh, as Amazon said it would. Um, it should be there hopefully today and I can get it and do that spa treatment. Uh, but it did not arrive in time for me to do it last week. Um, so there you have it. There it is. There's absolutely nothing done and uh, nothing nearly done. Um, so, hey, why don't I cut this segment a little bit short? to make up for me droning on and on in the other ones. So, nothing finished. So, what have I been spinning this week? Um, nothing. I, I don't have anything on the wheel except I had, um, I was having problems getting the gradient uh, fail too on the wheel uh, when I went to spin it last week. So, I'd used the hip strings buoy beacon as uh, as my um, as my anchor uh, yarn to get it on because when I the I'm spinning the hip strings buoy to buoy beacon as a medium um, width yarn instead of the fine width that I was using on the sock yarn uh, the gradient sock yarn fail. Yeah, I gotta keep calling it a fail. Until I succeed, it's just it's just a fail. But anyway, um, so I just hauled out the the second braid of beacon and I you know, attached it on and it's no problem whatsoever. I think when I first start spinning, um I'm a little I, I tend to grab it a little bit hard um, because, you know, I still have the fear of the, the entire braid going through the orifice at once. Um, wouldn't be the first time. Um, so until I relax a little bit, and this is why I was trying to spin every day, so I would, like, relax my hands when I start spinning because otherwise if I don't spin every day, I don't relax my hands. I grip onto the fiber really tightly, and then it breaks as it goes onto the wheel. So I started spinning the beacon, and 
just spun a bit of it enough to um, kind of coat the bobbin and get my hands to relax. And then I broke that off and then attached the gradient onto it and then switched the, um, switched the wheel over to the finer um, ratio, the 17 to 1 ratio, and uh, did the finer spin with the gradient. And then, of course, it it took the fiber right away and, and stopped breaking it every time I went to uh, spin it and it wasn't it wasn't too fine it, it, it came out really nicely as far as the width went if I had only uh, counted to 20 it would have been quite a good spin alas that did not happen but anyway so that's the only thing on the bobbins right now is that hip strings um, buoy beacon and uh, that's the only thing in the pending pile um, for the wheel right now, too. Other than that, I have the um, the rest of the spindle merino that I still need to do, um, which I will I will get to. I'm just kind of really want to get up to the shoulder point on the sweater right now, so I can try that on and. Uh, see if I need to re-knit the whole thing because that will take time and once once I know what's up with that um, I'll be able <laughs> I almost said I'll be able to relax right? I'll be able to obsess less about the sweater and how it's going um, so that's what's up with spinning in stash up down um, I <sighs> One of the people on the boards was kind enough to um, give me the URL for a sock yarn website. It's hotyarns.com, H-O-T-Y-A-R-N.com. And so they had 752 um, balls of yarn to look at because I'm still looking for the Christmas yarn. Um, so after I finished my, after I finished looking through and adding ball after ball after ball of sock yarn to my cart, I went and looked at the cart and, uh, I pared it down and I, I got a ball of sock yarn. Um, of course it's, you know, one of those self-striping, um, types of yarn which I really like and um, so hopefully that will be coming in the mail soon um, their shipping rates they do flat rate shipping to US and Canada so that was really cool and um, so stash up a new ball of sock yarn is coming my way but is it really a stash up because it's sock yarn so it doesn't count so technically not a stash up or down but a new ball of sock yarn coming. Yay! And now a word not from a sponsor. The Hudson Valley Sheep and Wool Company raises Shetland and Icelandic sheep, and right on the farm they have their own mill where all of the fleece are processed. Stop on by, say hey to Mary, Jamie, or Mickey, and don't forget to say hi to the dogs as well. Last Sunday of the month is the sit and spin, so stop on by for some tea, bring your spinning wheel, and have a great time. Hudson Valley Sheep and Wool Company. We'll see them at Rhinebeck. Where I want to be. Well, I heard that there is a week-long class that Judith McKenzie, all hail Judith McKenzie, hail, is teaching out on the West Coast that someone who might be the owner of Homestead Hobbyist will be attending. Um, and he's going to have lunch with Judith McKenzie. All hail Judith McKenzie. Hail. And he'll have classes with Judith McKenzie. All hail Judith McKenzie. Hail. And all these wonderful things. So I'm trying to figure out just how I can go ahead and get a ticket 
to go to the West Coast to also attend these wonderful classes and have lunch and everything. Um, so that's where I want to be. I, I don't even know what the class is going to be about, but based upon the teacher, I would say that it's going to be something good and something fun, and I'm totally, totally jealous. But because I have the garden tour coming up and, you know, that whole thing about responsibilities and things you must do in life, um, I won't be attending. But I'd like to. I think it would be a lot of fun. And uh, it would probably be a weaving class or something. And then I'd be sitting there weaving. Not that I have anything against woven fabrics or anything. I just, um, I did weaving when I was younger, and I'm just not into weaving right now. Uh, and I don't foresee weaving any point in my future, unless it's to make little coasters, because I think they're really cute when they're little woven coasters. But anyway, so that's where I want to be. But not going to be. In grabby paws this week, uh, things that I want, but I'm probably not going to get. See, note how I changed that to probably, as opposed to definitely won't get. Uh, anyway, um, I really did not spend a lot of time doing serious online wannabe shopping. Um, because I spent a lot of time looking at the sock yarn, and then I spent a lot of time looking for a gradient um, fiber blend that would be socks for Rhinebeck, and I didn't spend any time at all looking for spindles or anything like that, and of course... I didn't spend any time looking at antique gossip wheels or anything like that. I just, it was looking through all the sock yarns. That's what took up all my virtual shopping time. Um, so that was my grabby pause, just looking for sock yarns that I didn't find the perfect Christmas sock yarn, although I did find a pretty sock yarn, which I'll get. But, um, nothing new in Grabby Paws. There was a, oh, there was a shop update from Hello Yarns, which I totally missed. And so, by the time I managed to get my browser pointed over there, there were only, like, four braids of yarn left out of everything that they had posted up. Um, fortunately for me, uh, none of them was the perfect I must have it or I can't go on living, um, braid. So I was really, I was happy that they didn't have anything that I couldn't live without. That sounds kind of weird, but, uh, but, but true nonetheless. Um, so Grabby paws. Uh, it was all about sock yarn, and I actually got some. In dough this week, um, everything went perfectly smoothly. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wish, right? Um, so I was knitting the left front of the Rhinebeck sweater, and... I don't know how I could have possibly missed it because what I do is I read the instructions through a couple of times all the way, start to finish. Um, then I totally forget everything that was in the instructions, um, which accounts for my shock and surprise at seeing the um, short rows on the back. But anyway... Um, then as I'm going through the pattern, I read, you know, that section. And then I start going ahead and knitting that section. Because they always get you with the at the same times. 
So I was really, really focused on not getting nabbed by a at the same time. And I didn't get nabbed by an at the same time. I got nabbed by the second half of a sentence. The first half of the sentence said, um, decrease one every other row for six rows. So I did that. Well, there was the second half of the sentence which said, decrease one every other row for 12 rows, um, which I didn't do. So when I got to the top of the left front, uh, the piece was 24 rows short because, <laughs> no, I didn't read the second half of the sentence. And it wasn't like it was hidden or anything or in light font or... It, it was right clearly there. I just, you know, I didn't read it. <sighs> so, anywho, I ripped all the way back. Um, the one thing I did find that worked really well, though, uh, because they say, you know, you have to measure the length from where the armhole shaping begins and then go up to the top of the shoulder... Um, so what I did was I took uh, the the stitch markers that are clips, not the solid ring stitch marker, but the clip-on ones, and I clipped them to that row of knitting, like out in the middle of the row, so I could easily measure from that specific row of stitches up to the top of the shoulder and it made it so much easier so that's a little tip that I figured out I'm sure somebody else figured it out about a hundred years ago um, but it worked really well for me to make it easy to see where the armhole shaping began in the middle of that row instead of having to go all the way over to the armhole and then move it on out because you've got all those decreases so you can't measure all the way up to the top, and and it worked really well. So I say give that a try if you'd like. And that's it for dough. And where I'll be this week? Well, I'll be I'll be going around uh, with Mr. Mitten, trying to raise funds for our garden tour. Um, what we do is, I mean, we we charge a nominal fee for the tour. Uh, and that works pretty nicely, and we get we get a good attendance to it. But in order to pay for all of the um, posters and the uh, little guidebooks that we print up and everything, we raise money from businesses in town. Um, because we figure that since what we do is we the whole point of the tour is to raise money to buy bulbs that we give away in the fall for people around town to plant around town, that it's cool for the businesses to um, support that because if the town looks really nice, then uh, it draws more people to stop on their way um, upstate and then they'll spend some money in the businesses so it's good for the businesses to support the tour. Uh, so we'll be going around doing fundraising, uh, specifically today because I have the day off. Um, so I'll be driving them all away, all around town. Um, and that's the only scheduled thing, aside from work and home, home and work, uh, that I have planned for this week. So that's where I'll be. Gardenter, 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 and, uh, knitting on the train when I go back to work tomorrow. And maybe tonight if I get my stuff done. In questions this week, Kath asks, um, I've been so busy knitting socks for DH, weaving in the ends of the hap shawl, and it still needs to be blocked, and Mr. Kath won't build her a traditional flamed frame to block it. <sighs> and she's spinning for another pair of socks, and her fibery pursuits have gotten in the way of maintaining her gardens. Um, although she's kept up with watering and the deadheading, but the weeds are gaining, and some of them are taller than her plants. Some of them are actually taller than her. But she noticed some of them have cute little flowers on, 
and feathery sorts of leaves, and she's thinking maybe she should just claim that they're very expensive plants and leave them there. And she wants to know if she can get away with it. Will somebody catch on and call her bluff? Will the green things eventually grow so big she'll need to fear for her well-being? Well, Kath, um, the bottom line is, if you want your entire garden to be full of weeds, go ahead and let those weeds grow. Once those uh, cute little flowers uh, turn into seeds, they're going to disperse throughout your garden, and uh, they're going to crowd out the plants that you have added into your garden that are not native to your areas, whereas the weeds are pretty much native or they're invasive species which are thriving in your area, and everything about your garden makes it perfect condition for them to grow. So if you would like a garden full of weeds, go ahead and let them grow. Otherwise, take five minutes and do a section of your garden. You know, you do have to take a break from spinning and knitting so you don't get, your body doesn't get all stressed out from being in a seated position all the time. So when you're going out to do your your stretch, be it at the commercial break for the television show that you're watching while you're spinning and knitting or while you're sitting on your swing, just set aside the knitting and spinning for a moment Take five minutes, do a section of garden, and get rid of the weeds. Um, because if you don't get rid of them, they will take over everything. And you'll think, oh no, they're not going to take over everything because it's just this year. Well, this year uh, you have one weed, and next year that one weed has given you 500. Um, so if you want your garden to be weed-free... Um, take the time to weed it. Otherwise, you're going to end up uh, choking out all of your purchased plants with the native and invasive plants, which are really more suited to growing in that space. Um, so there you have it. If, you, if the garden's important to you, take time to maintain it. If it's not that important to you, um, enjoy it, because some of the weeds are really quite lovely. Um, Mr. Mitten and I uh, had a had a weed, I think it was called uh, Spotted Dick, pop up in the vegetable garden and we thought it was really beautiful. Um, we didn't realize at the time how terribly invasive it was, uh, so we let it, we let it grow and um, it spit out, and by spit out I mean it when the seed pod burst, it literally spit out its seeds into about a 10 foot radius. So year one, it was really cute. There were like five of these adorable little, um, they look like uh, silver lily of the valley flowers, and we thought they were so precious and adorable. Um, the next year, there were about 1,500 of these horrid little silver lily of the valley flowers um, all over the garden and not only did they spit out seeds on top of the soil but uh, we found out that they had grew nodules on their roots um, which spread below the soil as well so we had to dig up every single one of them to get them out of the vegetable garden and some of them still pop up um, a few years later, and it, our vegetable garden, we don't use um, pesticides or anything like that. We just use the, a black cloth and, and heat to kill weeds, or we dig them up all the way down to the roots. Um, so it was a lot of digging to get all of those weeds out. And uh, I hope that, that little anecdote uh, helps answer your question. Alrighty. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.